left, and I have got everything loaded and ready to go. Um, what I'll get you to do is turn that and release the parking brake. You know how to, you know how to use the brakes? Uh, both feet. Pedals are up on the top for, uh, for brakes, and for the tight turns, you've got the tiller, little steering wheel over there on the left. Okay, so we're starting to move forward here. I'll get you to come out and make a right turn on the runway, and now we'll head up towards uh, Manhattan. Who designs these simulators? Uh, CAE. Okay. Uh, I believe that's out of, I want to say it's out of Canada. I'm a, a pilot here at JetBlue okay. and also uh, an instructor. So last month I flew the line. This month I'm in the training center. Oh, okay. I'm out for the summer. Kind of flow back and forth. This is the runway right here. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Bring it right on out on the center line. <laughs> the one I do was in motion. <laughs> this is sick. It's a little sensitive after a while. You get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, let me line you up here. And if you'll put a, your hand up here and your other hand over on the side stick, you got it. And you can go ahead and push those thrust flutters all the way. Never use one without a yoke. Oh, it's nice not having anything here. It's yeah. Just, this is a very, very comfortable airplane. Yeah. After it's, we take off, we do two clicks back. And you got it. Well, remember. All right, so you'll use your pedals left and right. We'll fine tune. Center line. And when I tell you to rotate, pull back on the stick, and we'll take the little black box there and set it up at 15 degrees. And I'll show you how to do that. Go ahead and uh, rotate. And right a little further, your next one right there is perfect. Positive right gear up. You've got your, uh, your flight director bars here that are commanding your time. If you put it right through your uh, climb and your heading, if you put it right there in the crosshairs, that'll level you off at 2,000 feet. There we go. You can bring that back two clicks. Now the Statue of Liberty is out to the left. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. If you'd like to go and hit it, just stay with the <laughs> south side of the... Uh, <laughs> It's outside of the city there. It's heading 260. And I'm going to take these uh, flight directors off. I'll spin that up to get rid of the noise. When you guys fly, do you look a lot at the, you know, the dials down here and kind of look out there at the same time? Both. Uh, we're, cross, we're looking outside. We're cross-referencing down here for uh, more accurate information. Uh, and, it, and it all depends on the operation. I'd say 99% of the time we're right down here. It's IFR. You're, you're either, because we fly instrument flight plans uh, everywhere we go. But when you come into airports, uh, you know, JetBlue, they have the airport in sight, airport in sight, clear for the visual. We still come back here and cross reference for, uh, for more precise information, but we're not on a set route that we have to abide uh, by. So, so, and in that case, we'd be out here looking at the runway and doing our own descent. And, so when there's an ILS available, you fly a visual? Um, if they cleared us for a visual to a runway with an ILS, um, we'll fly to the runway. We'll have the ILS set up for that guidance. We're always going to use the best guidance that's there on the, coming out of that runway. Um, but technically, it's a visual approach. Uh, you know, we're not getting vectors to a final and joining up. Let's see, we're at 3,500 feet. If you want to take it down to about a thousand, we can get a little better view of this thing. So oh, you have flying for? I started when I was, uh, well, I kind of grew up in an airplane. My father oh, okay. flew for United, and uh, at three, I set the front seat of his Piper Cub, and, and it's, uh, flew around, you know, with his air show routines. Um, Are you military? Nope, nope. I, uh, after after uh, high school, I went to college, got a business degree, and then after college, I decided I wanted to 
go into aviation as a career okay. and went to a, it's called a Part 141 school down in uh, Panama City, Florida. I got my private when I was in high school. Yep. Started at 16 and got that. But uh, after college, when I decided to do the commercial flying thing, I went down and been doing it ever since. Nice. It seems about 400 years ago. But, uh, do you want to fly commercially? 2,500. No, I was trying to go military, but then I just gave up. <laughs> Ran out of money trying to get my private. It's expensive. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, you know, they're talking about right. You know, over the last 20 years, it's been a just a surplus of pilots, and it's made the career very difficult. Uh, I just don't see how that can continue with with the price of training right now. Yeah, when I was 16, I think it was uh, about 26. Wow. <laughs> It's, it's astronomical. And, and well, to be honest with you, if my, son, <laughs> if my son said, Dad, I want to fly for a living, I'd probably say, you know, for the for the four-year degree and then all the flying on top, yeah. um, I, I'd be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Um, and, and I hate to say that because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful career. It's, uh, I've always said it's, uh, it's much better than working for a living. <laughs> but um, but that you've got to have a return on investment, and it makes sense for what I put into it. I went from my private all the way through my all my instructor ratings and multi-engine ratings for seventeen thousand oh, dollars. Wow. Of course, that's back One in ninety. It was back in ninety two. <laughs> a little, little, little while ago. So we're flying up the Hudson River. So uh, the low wings, the auto throttle moves. These things move, but on this on Airbus, it sits still. Is it the speed is actually is controlled by the, the computer here, or the computer here? We haven't set the speed. The FMGCs here. here on the FMGCs here run a. They have they have a logic for what speed in different phases of flight. Uh, right now, I've actually got that overridden by pulling. So if I push that right there. Mm -hmm. um, There's a flight plan in there. This would go to 250. Uh -huh. uh, I've got it overridden. It's called a selected speed. And, uh, I so if air traffic says down. maintain 180, this overrides the computer. I would say, yeah. Uh, if I pull that, yep. it'll override the computer. If not, it's got a logic in there. And you can see if I run that up, it's, the speed changes. Yep. Uh, it's got auto trimming. Yeah, so this is all fly by wire. Yep. So when, when you're when you're landing, this controls the speed. Auto trim, it's controls. It's controls. But you keep your hands here all the time. If you need to go around, around. yeah. If you need it for a go around, other than that, th this thing will. I can set this up on final. It will fly an approach, land, stay on center line, and come to a stop. Auto braking all by itself. <laughs> what is the pilot action? Uh, we, 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 we have to pull the thrust levers back. Yeah. When, when it says, it'll say retard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you pull it back, but the thrust is already back. You're just repositioning the levers, and it tells you to do it. It actually insults you first yeah, by calling you a repo. Yes. <laughs> now, how often do you Who's touch next? any of any of these dials? A lot. Just about every one of these things we're going to be touching well, in all flight. Start it's got to be uh, all right. most of it. Um, you know, you've got to program everything for the takeoff and the routes. Uh, when you get clearances, you're going to be you know changing those things. Uh, you're going to reprogram it for landing, so you can slide that back and forth. So who, who wants to fly? Who wants to land? Let's let, fly yeah. around. Come on up here. <laughs> you can tell your friends you blew a $15 million video game. <laughs> Go ahead, Gabriel. Will this simulator do a uh, backflip? Because I flew a C5 simulator at Lockheed Martin. This one will. It actually let it do a backflip. This one will loop. Yeah. Um, it will loop. It will stay on motion. <laughs> so now the Airbus, the right. Airbus will not oh, okay. loop. Uh, I have to turn the flight control computers off because they have logic. This whole airplane is a. It's an airplane of, of logic and logarithms. Put your hand on the stick. Uh, turn it left. There. there. You go. And then turn it right. So do I just pull it back? Lightly. <laughs> 
There you go. Now you're flying. Turn I, it. I can fail anything that the airplane can fit. Yeah. Turn it right and lift up the uh, stick. I can make thunderstorms. I thing. can make snow. <laughs> I can make uh, turbulence. I can make it nasty. I can do anything. And yeah, that's generally. It's awesome. We never see this when we're in your training. It's always, uh, you know, clouds <laughs> at Worst best. Case. Yeah. Wow. Is this the actual size of a cockpit? Or a it is. The yeah. actual size. I mean, you, you always wonder, obviously, how big it is. The know. Airbus, for this size airplane, 150 seats, the Airbus has got the nicest, most roomy cockpit of, of all the airplanes. Um, a Boeing would have a one, one seat right here. Their legs yeah. would kind of straddle a little bit, and that's it. Uh, this airplane, if you take that circuit breaker wall, yep. see how it looks like it hinges there? Yep. It does. If you folded that in, there's two seats back there, and it's very... Uh, if you turn it open. to the right, go across the river, you'll loop us back around the York and, and, line, and give them a setting for landing. All right. It was a right turn, and you see out there? I know that seat sits a little bit low. See how far we can get it up. <laughs> there we go. That's a little better. Yeah. That armrest adjusts, too. But I don't think that's good. Right on around. I think uh, nighttime is a neat display. Environment, thunderstorm. Oh wow, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, I can't see a thing. <laughs> you don't need to.